Hello. Today we're going to be learning how to use pronouns to avoid repetition in our writing. Now you might remember that we did look at this a few weeks ago. Don't worry, there's lots of new learning to do today. For this lesson, you'll just need a pen or pencil and some paper to write on. So let's look back to the learning from a few weeks ago. We want to see how much of this you remembered. Pause the film and answer these questions. Write your answers into your book. So let's see how much you've remembered. Hopefully you've written down that pronouns are a group of words we can use in our writing instead of using nouns. And remember, a noun is a person, a place or a thing. We use nouns a lot in our speech and also our writing. Sometimes we use them too much. And so we could, to avoid repetition, use a pronoun instead. And the pronouns you should have put in the table would have been she and her for Mrs Roberts, he and him for Father Christmas, and it for England. Today, we're extending our understanding of pronouns by looking at possessive pronouns. Can you remember what the word possession means? We used it recently when we were looking at possessive apostrophes. Have a think. Possession shows that something belongs to someone or something. So a possessive noun shows that someone possesses something. And a possessive pronoun can replace a possessive noun. And there's some examples of possessive pronouns here. My, mine, your, yours, etc. So in the sentences, can you see how the possessive nouns have been replaced with possessive pronouns? Miss Napier picked up Miss Napier's hat and pulled down the hat's brim. And the second sentence has changed. Miss Napier picked up her hat and pulled down its brim. Can you see how the possessive nouns, Miss Napier's and hats, have been replaced by possessive pronouns, her and its? Do those red possessive pronouns have an apostrophe? No, they don't, and that's really important. Time for your first challenge. It's going to be to identify the pronouns in these sentences. In a moment, I want you to pause the film and one by one, write the sentences down and underline the possessive pronoun. Are you ready? Pause the film and find the pronouns. I've also given you a star challenge if you want to stretch your brain a little bit further. And here's the nouns and verbs identified if you did the star challenge. Pause the film to mark if you need to. Now here's something important that I want to point out. I didn't really understand this till I was much older than you, but actually it's very simple. There are two meanings of it. The one on the left is a contraction of it is. You've already learned how to do this. We'd need an apostrophe here to show the missing letter I. We are playing inside because it's raining. We could have written, we are playing inside because it is raining. That's one meaning of it when it's got a contraction. The other meaning of it on the right hand side is the one we've been learning to use today. It's a possessive pronoun and it replaces a noun. We don't need an apostrophe. The shark opened its mouth wide. Here, it is just replacing the shark. We could say the shark opened the shark's mouth wide, but that's too much repetition. So it's easy. Each time you write the word it, just ask yourself, can it be replaced by it is? 
If the answer is yes, then you need an apostrophe. Otherwise, you don't need one. Fantastic. So now that you can identify possessive pronouns in a sentence, I want you to add in your own. Remember that it needs to be the correct pronoun so that the sentence makes sense. You'll need your pen or pencil and paper again. When you pause the film, you need to write out each sentence and insert the correct pronoun. Remember they're listed at the top to help you. And the first one's done for you as well. Ready? Pause the film and off you go. Good work. Let's see how you've got on. We'll check each sentence, tick if you've got it correct, and make sure you change it if you haven't quite managed it this time. So number one was done for you. In number two, I think you should have added the possessive pronoun her. It's replacing the noun Anya's. Anya's friend, her friend. In number three, we needed to use their because there's more than one child. And again, I do hope you've spelt it right. In number four, it's his. And in number five, my. If you did the star challenge, the punctuation is shown here with that comma after the verb said. In number six, we don't know whether the dog is male or female, so we can't really use the possessive pronouns his or her. We need to use its, its tail. I hope that you haven't put an apostrophe in. In number seven, we've got two, her and mine. So now we know that you can identify possessive pronouns and put them into sentences. If you remember, the reason for learning to do this is to avoid the repetition of nouns. In this task, you can see that the nouns have been repeated a few times in each sentence. They really don't sound very expert. So I'd like you to replace the nouns that are underlined and put a possessive pronoun in their place. The list isn't on this page, but you can always go back and look at them if you get stuck. In a moment, I'd like you to pause the film and write out each sentence, replacing the underlined noun with a pronoun. Ready? Off you go. So let's see how you've got on. Remember to tick or fix as we go. In number one, you should have put in the possessive pronoun there. Lots of children sent their entries in for the competition's prize draw. In number two, we've got Anya and her family were proud and their reaction was enthusiastic. So their is relating to the whole family. In number three, dad said Anya and I could use his garden tools. So the his is replacing dad's because we enjoy growing our favourite flowers. So that our is relating to Anya and the person that's speaking. In number four, the dog tried to bury its bone, hopefully you haven't put an apostrophe there, in the middle of our flower bed. Well done. To end, we're going to check our learning by looking at these three sentences. Only one is correct. Can you spot which one? You're going to need to use today's learning as well as thinking back to last week's work on apostrophes for possession. Pause the film and have a look. So let's look at it together. Looking at sentence three, I can see that's incorrect because the writers use the plural form of families rather than the possessive one. There is still just one family, so we spell that with a Y. Sentence three can't be correct. In sentence two, it has correctly spelt family and then put an apostrophe S to show the back garden belongs to the family. I'm now looking at the its though. That its is replacing the noun dog. It's a possessive pronoun, so it shouldn't have an apostrophe. Remember, when you put in an apostrophe, it makes it a contraction of it is, and we don't want to say the dog chased it is ball. That wouldn't make sense. So number two is also not correct. Let's check that sentence one actually is right. We can see the possessive pronoun it's has been used correctly with no apostrophe. And also they've spelt family correctly to show it's the family's back garden. Well done if you spotted that. And thank you for joining me with your learning today.